2 Timothy chapter number 4. The Apostle Paul's about ready to go off the scene. He's about ready to go meet the Lord. The Lord's given him insight. And the Apostle Paul don't sound like he's having a pity party. As a matter of fact, he sounds kind of excited. <clears throat> he said, Henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, not for me only, but for all them that love is appearing. Paul's about ready to go to the chopping block, have his head chopped off. But one of the last things he feels compelled to do is write this to young Timothy, a young pastor, a man that was saved under Paul, a man that was surrendered to preach under Paul, a man that Paul considered his own son in the faith. And Paul, writing to Timothy, says this, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Brother Uriah, if it was good enough for Timothy, it's good enough for you. It's good enough for me. It's good enough for every preacher of the gospel. Can I say that we look at this charge to Timothy and as... You have asked me as your friend to preach a charge to you. I want you to notice that Paul leaves Timothy the charge of ponderosity. And that means uh, it has a lot of weight to it. There's a lot of gravity to it. There's a lot of severity to it. Look what Paul said in verse 1. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick or the alive, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Can I say, Brother Uriah, tonight uh, you uh, have made a commitment and stepped out uh, and have now got a bullseye on your back uh, by the devil because you uh, have answered the call to preach the gospel. Uh, and as Paul judged Timothy before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I do as well. You'll answer to Christ. Uh, you'll stand before him. Uh, you'll give him an account of every message you preach. Uh, you'll give an account of the Bible and what God uh, uh, unfolds to you and uh, how faithful you are to it. Uh, and as Paul is uh, given this grave and serious and severe uh, charge to Timothy, I do you. Uh, it's not only a charge of ponderosity, it is a charge to preach. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, Brother Uriah, we don't need uh, any more entertainers. Uh, we don't need theatrics. Uh, we don't need uh, uh, tiptoe through the tulip kind of guys. Uh, we need preachers, uh, men of God that's got a backbone uh, that'll stand up uh, without fear or favor uh, and say, What thus saith the Lord? Uh, he said in verse 2, uh, Preach the word. Uh, Hey, uh, if there's a shortage of anything today, it's Bible preaching. Uh, you're going to find, uh, 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 as you travel around in the Carolinas from church uh, to church with uh, uh, and through uh, the Bible college, uh, you're going to find a lot of sad stories are being preached. Uh, you're going to find uh, a lot of history is going to be preached. Uh, but you don't find a lot of people that preach the Word. Uh, uh, Paul said uh, you can't improve upon the Word. Uh, uh, you can't survive without the Word. Uh, he said, Timothy, preach the Word. Uh, and Brother Uriah, I'm telling you tonight, uh, you fall in love with that Bible. Uh, you eat that Bible. Uh, you put that Bible in your heart. Uh, you memorize it. Uh, you meditate on it. Uh, and when the mantle falls on you to stand behind the sacred desk, uh, you stand up uh, and you preach what thus saith the Lord. Uh, we find that he charges him to preach. But he also charges him to be prepared. Look what he says. Preach the word. 
be instant in season and out of season. You never know when the Lord is going to pull you out of his toolbox to preach to somebody. You may be at school and all of a sudden they may say, we want you to preach on the radio. You better have something ready. Huh? There might be a preacher calls at the last moment, got sick, uh, and he wants you to come and supply his pulpit. Or it could be like Brother Phil uh, had a salesman show up at his door the other day, uh, and uh, instead of buying whatever he was selling, uh, Phil got to talking to him about the Bible, uh, found out he was a Roman Catholic, and then Brother Phil gave him a track and preached to him for a little bit. You never know. But you're always to be ready to give a man an answer. We're to be prepared. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Can I say there's a lot of people that mishandle the Bible because they don't know how to rightly divide it. In order for it to be doctrine, it has to be written in the same context to the same people uh, 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 at, at, uh, in, in two or three different places. So uh, the reason we have over 300 different denominations is people take the Bible out of context. They'll take one verse and build a whole doctrine on it. And my dear friend, I challenge you and charge you to study the Bible. You're going to school. Take every advantage of it. Uh, don't take easy classes. Take ones that will challenge you to get in the Bible. Study the Bible. Study those books nobody else wants to study. You'll find nuggets you never dreamed of. Study the Bible. Learn the Bible. Be prepared. As my dear friends, uh, uh, what he'll find out, what you'll find out, uh, those early days, you'll grasp more than you will in your latter days. So be prepared. Learn all you can. Be a sponge and study the Bible. He charges him uh, of ponderosity, the gravity of it. He charges him to preach. He charges him to be prepared. But he also charges him to be purposeful. Look again at verse number 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. Hmm? Can I say there's a lot of people that love singing? They don't love preaching. Mm, can I say that preaching's not popular? You preach this book, you're going to be hated. Jesus was hated for preaching the word, and will be hated for preaching the word. But Paul charges Timothy to have purpose and be pers purposeful in his preaching. Look what he tells him to do. He tells him to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Can I say the word reprove means to admonish, to scold, to correct. We got a lot of spineless, sissy preachers that's afraid to correct anybody with the Bible. Hmm? Uh, people don't want to be corrected. Uh, the essence of sin is my right to my claim to myself. I, I, I. I know what's best for me. But the Bible tells us God resisted the proud but gave grace to the humble. The Bible tells us that it's got to be God's way and not our way. And a lot of times you're going to have to take this Bible and correct people. They don't like it. Can I say, not every preach, every sermon's reproving. Sometimes you've got to do some rebuking. Rebuking's different than reproving. A lot of people want to lump them together. Whereas reproving, you scold and correct. Rebuking, you call them out. You reprimand them severely, and you condemn them. Hmm? Brother Uriah, people don't like hearing they're going to die and go to hell. Baptists don't like to hear. They got a tithe, give an offering, give a mission offering. They don't like to hear that. Baptists don't like to hear that they're not the only ones going to be sitting at the table. They don't like to hear it. Baptists don't like to hear 
that uh, because they're sitting in an air conditioning building with padded pews, they've arrived. Sometimes you're going to have to reprimand them severely. Sometimes you're going to have to condemn them. Tell them they need to get right with God. People don't like that. Now you've sat around your preacher long enough. He's not afraid to tell somebody they need to get right with God. He did it while I was preaching. Huh? Huh? Sometimes you got to rebuke. Sometimes you got to reprove. But then sometimes you get to exhort. You exhorted us tonight. You exhorted us to be thankful. The word exhort means to urge or to persuade. Persuade people, what the Bible says. Urge people to get right with the Lord. Urge people to put the Bible into practice. Urge people to give Jesus glory. Can I say, 2 Corinthians 5.11 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The reason you tell people the truth, you know they're going to stand before God and you want them to be right with the Lord. Uh, so you're going to have to sometimes you exhort. But then Paul tells Timothy with all long suffering. Now, you're going to find Americans are not like islanders. We're impatient. We don't have island time here. Isn't that right, Naj? Hard to learn, isn't it? Huh? Class at 8 o'clock, you can't stroll in there at 8.30 and be okay with the teacher, can you? Nope. You've got to start work at 8 o'clock. Boss man wants you there at 8 o'clock. Mm -mm. You're going to find out. Things are a little different in the states. And also, things are different with preachers. We want to preach one message and see everybody be where they're supposed to be with the Lord. Uh, it's just like a rock. It's in a water brook for a long period of time. That water runs over that rock and it smooths it out. So when you reach down there and grab that rock, it's all smooth. It didn't start out that way. And can I say sometimes the washing of the water, the Word of God, as you're preaching is knocking rough edges off people. But you've got to be patient. You've got to be long-suffering. The old adage, Rome wasn't built in a day. Can I say a mature Christian isn't built in a day? You just got to have patience with people. Be long-suffering. Just keep preaching to them, and you're going to see them take a step forward. You're going to say, hallelujah, and then they're going to take three steps backwards. You're going to say, oh, no, I'm a horrible preacher, and just be long-suffering. Just keep preaching. Keep preaching. Sometimes it's planting. Sometimes it's watering. Sometimes just keep watering. Keep watering, and God gives the increase. You got to be long-suffering. I've had to learn that. It's hard. Huh? You got to be long-suffering. But then he also says, in verse number 2, with all long-suffering and that dirty little word that nobody likes to hear, doctrine. Jesus said that he didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. And he put uh, enmity between mother and daughter and father and son. Uh, and what was he saying? What divides the sword? Doctrine. Hmm? Uh, the reason we're not ashamed to put out there on the sign that we're independent, fundamental, Bible-believing is because that's what we are. Now, the place up the street that calls itself a church doesn't tell you what they are. The one on down the street from that doesn't tell you what they are. And all through this community, you'll find places that calls themselves churches, uh, but they don't want to be identified with what they believe because they don't know what they believe. Huh? They've got a feel-good thing. Uh, 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 matter of fact, one of the Methodist church, uh, 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 very subtly, has got the rainbow now on their uh, sign. Uh, and we had that Episcopalian in a uh, 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 church uh, close to my barber. says, everybody's welcome here. Uh, and uh, uh, they got uh, all these kind of things where they want everybody to assemble under the name of Jesus, lay aside all doctrine, and let's just sing Kumbaya and be happy. Jesus gave us the word of God. He handed it down. And we are to embrace the doctrine of the Bible. Every jot and tittle is inspired of God. I don't have to worry about looking for something better, Brother Ron. I got God's word. I don't need anything else. Brother Tony, I don't believe that this contains his word. I believe it is his word. If I thought there was a better book, I'd get it. There isn't. 
And by the way, there are many versions. There's only one Bible. And God wrote it. A lot of people don't like it. They don't like that kind of preaching. Brother Uriah, you just might as well make up your mind. You're going to preach truth whether they get mad or not because it's better to please Jesus than to please people. Mm -hmm. And you study the doctrine. Know why you're a Baptist. Know why you're an independent fundamental Baptist. Know what the Bible teaches. Know the doctrines. We're to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Mm -hmm. I can read everything Jesus preached. I can read everything that John preached and Paul preached and Peter preached. Uh, and what a blessing to know uh, some 2,000 years later we're preaching the same thing. Huh? Hey, they've not always called us independent Baptists. They've not always uh, 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 met under a, a, a roof with a steeple on it. Uh, uh, they've not always had the liberties and freedoms to openly assemble. Uh, but one thing that is consistent for the last 2,000 years, uh, the Word of God and our doctrines per, uh, perpetuated. Uh, and we have it today, just like Brother Bob said, it's been handed down to us. Hmm? I didn't get up some day, one day and decide what I was going to believe. I studied the Word of God and God burned in my heart what His Word says. Now when you go to school, you're going to be confronted with a lot of things. Hmm? Just like when we ate them ribs yesterday, brother. You ate the meat and you spit out the bones. Huh? Take truth and the meat and let the bones take care of themselves. All right? Uh, you don't have any hair anyway, but they, you know, there's, there's a crowd tell you got, how you got to wear your hair, and there's a crowd tell you got to wear a white shirt, and there's a crowd tell you this, a crowd tell you that. You better live by what Jesus said. Huh? Just take the meat. Because you know what's going to help people? That book. Meat. They need meat. They start out on milk, but they need meat. Just feed them the meat. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what my pastor told me. And I'm talking 37 years ago. He told me, don't have any hobby horses. Don't preach to people your personal convictions. And God's going to give you personal convictions as you get in that book. That's a wonderful thing. That's part of him sanctifying you and separating you unto himself. Uh, he's going to put some standards in your life that you won't cross. But if it's a personal standard, you don't preach it to that little girl right there. Uh, you preach the book to her. Uh, you preach that book to her. Uh, don't get any hobby horses. Your hobby horses ought to be what you preach tonight. In everything, give him thanks. Uh, your hobby horses ought to be like, we love Jesus. We're following Jesus. You ought to pray more. You ought to seek the Lord more. You ought to uh, praise Him more. Those kind of things are what you need to preach. Don't worry about her wearing white shoes tonight. Who cares? I'm glad she's in the house of God. But what I've found, if you preach this book to the people, and they start listening, and they start applying it, then the Holy Ghost starts telling them how they're to live and give them their convictions. You know what I'm saying? We're to be purposeful. When I first started preaching, I thought it was all about getting people to shout. I thought it was all about getting people in the altar. What I've learned is preaching is about helping people. We're to help the lost get to Jesus. We're to help the backslid get back to Jesus, but we're to help the people sitting in the pews to still walk with Jesus. It's about helping people. Because what you're going to find is people sitting in the pews got problems. They got issues. You got things going on in your life. Think about your dear mama. Just think about it. I don't know her well, but I know her well enough to know this. That lady's carried a heavy load and a heavy burden. Huh? It's not easy raising a, a boy with Down syndrome. It's not easy babysitting all them kids. It's not easy uh, uh, making a life for you. I mean, Lord have mercy, how much it takes to feed you? Huh? When she comes to church, she don't need somebody to beat on her. She needs somebody to give her some help, some comfort, some strength, so she can take a 
another step so she can live another day. There's people sitting in the pew like that. Be a blessing to them. Huh? Don't be a burden to them. Huh? Huh? By the way, your brother is a blessing. You can tell she not only had him in church, she taught him church. Uh, he sat right behind me. I'd hear him singing them songs. Bless my socks off. Uh, I was ready to preach by the time he got done singing. Huh? I'm telling you, learn the doctrine, the fundamental truths of the Bible. And Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Read the Bible. Let somebody preach it to you and pay attention to doctrine. 1 Timothy 4.16, Take heed unto thyselves and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 1 Timothy 6, verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, you're going to run into them down there in the Carolinas. There's a whole sect of people down there that are claiming they're Baptists and they're apologizing for how they were raised. Uh, they're trying to twist the Bible, put a different light on the Bible. They're trying to change the thing. Paul said... Uh, uh, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, the words of Christ, uh, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine uh, which is according to godliness, he is proud, uh, knowing nothing but doting about with questions and strives of words, uh, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, uh, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, uh, supposing that gain is godliness from some such withdraw thyself. Don't hang around that crowd. They'll corrupt your thinking. Hmm? See it all the time. People get to listening to something and all of a sudden make their own mind up about it and they begin to doubt the Bible, begin to doubt the fundamentals of the faith. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. This book is is inspired. It's God breathed. Just like God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, this book's alive. Uh, this book will take a dead sinner, it's dead uh, 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 to God uh, and quicken him and make him alive uh, because the Spirit of God takes the sword of the Lord uh, and changes people's lives. Uh, in verse 3 we find what happens without doctrine. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. Joe Olstein, Joyce Myers, all that crowd, huh? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. There's a big pushing in America that way. There's a lot of false preaching, a lot of false doctrine, a lot of things just like the devil in the garden just barely twisted the word of God. There's a lot of people messing with the things of God. He also urges Timothy to be perceptive. Verse number 5. He says, but watch thou in all things. You've got to be perceptive. Yeah. Uh, one fellow said the reason God gave us two ears and one mouth were to listen more than we're to talk. The reason he gave us two eyes and one mouth is we're to watch more than we're to talk. And just be perceptive. Watch. And be given to things. And watch what's going on. Watch people's lives. You know what's in people's heart eventually comes out their mouth. They tell on themselves. Just watch. Be perceptive. Watch out for the devil. He walks about as a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. Just be perceptive. Just know your environment. And then he tells him to be persistent. Look what he says. Endure afflictions. You just said it, even in the sad things. Thank the Lord. We heard in our camp meeting, don't quit if you get bit. Just keep on. You've got to learn to endure, to be persistent. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as that you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You need to just plant your feet. And just don't move. Stay true to the things of God. Hmm? 
There's a song where it talks about the old preacher man. They want him to change the Bible. And he just gets up on Sunday and preaches it the same way he's been preaching it in all them years. Just stay true. Hmm? Just stay true. And then he tells him, not only endure, but he tells him to propagate, to evangelize. He says, do the work of an evangelist. Now, a lot of guys got everything all messed up in the Word of God. An evangelist isn't a guy with five messages running all over the town, all over the country, preaching them five same, same messages to get a love offering. A real evangelist is a soul winner. Somebody that tells people the gospel, points them to Jesus. Somebody that gets folks into church and sitting under the Bible preaching so they get born again. That's, he says, do the work of an evangelist. Let people know that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And then he tells him one last thing. He tells him, make full proof of thy ministry. Whether you arrive, if there's anything that I can charge you to do is just perform faithfully. Make full proof of thy ministry. That simply means leave nothing neglected or undone. Whatever God's put on your heart to do, do it. There's nothing worse than somebody saying, you know, the Bible didn't teach it. Jesus taught us to, you know, count the cost. Lest we start a, something and we can't finish it. Start building a tire, we can't finish it. There's nothing worse than somebody says, well, God's let me to do this. Only to get out there and realize it's hard. And then they leave it neglected. They leave it undone. And there it sits. And instead of being a monument to what the Lord's done, it's a testimony against the church and against the Lord himself. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make sure it's the will of God for your life. And God will never ask you to do anything spiritually that he doesn't give you a verse to assure you. Hmm? And when he gives you assurance, you go at it with everything you got. But don't leave it undone. Don't leave it neglected. Second Timothy says this in chapter 1, verse 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. We can persevere and leave things where they're not undone and they're not neglected because he does the work through us when we allow him. Paul said, not I, but Christ live within me. God help us to yield ourselves to the will of God. God will never lead you to where he cannot keep you. He'll never guide you where he cannot provide for you. So you follow him and everything will be good. Now, you've asked us to pray over you. We're going to do that. Um, I want you to come up here, find your place on the altar. I want all of our preachers that are here to come. Gather around him. We're going to pray over this young man. That God uses him greatly. That God fills his mind with knowledge and fills his heart with zeal and fills him with the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray that God does that. And then we're going to pray that God opens doors and God uses him, God protects him. He's in a foreign country. He don't have many friends over here. And so we need to pray God helps him, keeps him, all right? And so this is what I want him to do. I want you men to lay hands on him as he gets down, just lay down and get down there on uh, and then I want the rest of the men come behind these men. And let's all pray over Brother Uriah. That God, whatever God's will is for his life, God will use him in a great capacity. All right? So let's pray, fellas, as God leads you to pray.
Our Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for this young man you've called to the gospel ministry. Brother Uriah has been a blessing in my life, Lord, uh, and I pray for him. I pray that, Lord, as he begins to study the scriptures there at school, some good men have come out of that school. God, I pray you'd give him a mind that, Lord, he absorbs uh, the information. And, God, I pray that uh, you'll grow him in the scriptures uh, and he'll be given to doctrine. And, God, I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd give him a heart for people. And, God, I pray that you'd fill him with the Holy Ghost. And, God, I pray you'd use him in a great capacity. Lord, he has a good spirit about him. And, God, i seen where Daniel had an excellent spirit, and God, you used him to impact uh, a foreign land. Uh, and God, I pray that you'd help him to be a blessing to the church he'll attend down there. Uh, God, I pray you'd help him to be a blessing to the pastor and to lay people alike. Uh, and God, I pray you'd open doors for him to preach and to impact people's lives with the Word of God. Uh, and God, I pray that God... Uh, You'd use him in a tremendous way. Uh, I pray that, Lord, the very mention of his name would cause hell to sh shiver, uh, knowing that he'll once again uh, stand behind a sacred desk and proclaim the greatness of Jesus. Uh, God, I do pray you'd open doors uh, and you bless him. Uh, but then, God, I pray you'd put a hedge about him. Uh, God, you'd protect him. Uh, God, I pray that, Lord, as the devil will try and throw snares... Uh, and temptation his way that God you'd insulate him and God you'd protect him uh, God your great hand of grace would be upon him uh, and God I pray you'd bless him abundantly I do pray Lord for brother Jeremy and the void that'll be left there in Grenada for all the work brother Uriah did to help in those churches uh, and God I pray that you'd help brother Jeremy in the church there I pray for his dear family his mother his brother and others uh, Lord, you'd bless them and help them as, Lord, I know they already miss him. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord, you'd give them that peace that passes all understanding. Uh, God, I pray that you'd give Brother Uriah good friends, uh, people he can confide in, uh, people that can be a blessing to him. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord, you would just do great and mighty things uh, that we know it's not through this uh, young man. Uh, Father, thank you for sending him into my life. Uh, Thank you for sending him this way. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the message you gave him tonight. Uh, Lord, it's not in the quantity of the speech. Uh, Lord, it's in what he had to say. Uh, Lord, we're guilty. We're not often thankful for uh, the sad times and the bad times. Uh, but God, the Word of God exhorts us to be thankful in everything. Uh, God, help us to take it to heart. Uh, now, bless, bless in the furtherance of this service. Uh, God, get glory to your name uh, and bless uh, Brother Uri Uriah. And Lord, will not fail to praise you and thank you for what you do in his life. Uh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, for it's in that name that's above every name, the lovely name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.